When palpating the osseous structures on the posterior side of the hip and pelvis, we must first consider the lower lumbar spine. The first thing we're going to palpate is the L4, L5 interspace, and that is basically the spot between the spinous process of L4 and the spinous process of L5. This is basically in line with the top of the iliac crest. So knowing how to palpate the iliac crest, we find the iliac crest, and by putting our fingers on top of the iliac crest and our thumb straight across to the spine, we should be right at that L4, L5 interspace. So that when once we find that, if we go above, we find a spinous process of L4, then we feel a gap, and then we feel the spinous process of L5. Once we know where that area is, that will indicate a lot of areas in the multipedi, longissimus, iliocostalis in this area for electrotherapy and other uh, various soft tissue te techniques. But we can place the heel of our hand at that L4, L5 interspace and then put our hand across down the midline of the buttocks and where our middle finger is should be at the tip of the coccyx so that our palm of our hand actually represents where the sacrum is. So the sacrum will be midline and it's just big, big large bone and we locate that by putting the heel of our palm on the L4, L5 interspace. The tip of our middle finger touches the coccyx there, thus, directly underneath our hands will be the sacrum. Once we find the sacrum, we have a good idea of where the PSIS, or posterior superior iliac spine is. And we can do this by either looking at the dimples that most people have. Hers are very faint, but there's the dimples right there. If you can't see those dimples, we simply follow the iliac crest up and around to where those dimples should be and then you will feel two prominent areas one there and one there and those prominent areas are considered the PSIS on each side. Now we are actually not going to palpate the joint space itself of the sacred iliac joint but knowing that from that PSIS going medial towards the sacrum you fall off into a gap of soft tissue. That gap is the uh, posterior uh, sacral iliac ligament, and that is considered the SI joint. If patients have pathologies, that is extremely tender to palpation. So we can actually palpate the joints on both sides, and we are palpating the sacral iliac joints. From that point, we are going to use the iliac crest again to find uh, the greater trochanter. So once we find the iliac crest, it's like putting your heel of your hand on the top of the iliac crest on the lateral side, and then the lateral side where your middle finger is on 99% of the patients, it will be uh, right there is the greater trochanter. If you're not sure if you're on it, you can simply lift the leg up and internally and externally rotate the hip to make sure that you are on the greater trochanter. From that point, we are going to use a soft tissue landmark, and that is what we call the gluteal fold, the fold in which the gluteus maximus meets the hamstrings. So there's a natural fold there we call the gluteal fold. It is horizontal or parallel to the ground and we are simply going to place our thumbs in that fold and push up and you can't miss it. This is a large huge tuberous uh, osseous structure called your ischial tuberosity and that is going to be a landmark for a, the hamstrings and the sacral tuberous ligament. From the ischial tuberosity we are going to go up at an angle towards the sacrum and we are going to feel above the ischial tuberosity and then uh, uh, strum the sacrotuberous ligament perpendicular to the direction that it runs. So it runs in this direction, we are going to strum it in this direction and you can feel a hard 
structure that is non-osseous, but is a very firm structure. And that is your sacrotuberous ligament. Uh, 